I'm Melvin Miller, who was a appointed principal of number two school in 1955. In 1955 was a year Disneyland opened. <coughs> With the influx <coughs> of newcomers coming into Orange County, the subdividers, the were buying up land all over Orange County, especially close to Disneyland. The Magnolia School District had an area of two miles by three miles, six square miles, mostly orange groves with two schools. One school was the Magnolia Number One School, where Maddie Lou Maxwell was principal, and Number Two School, where Mr. Nielsen was a sixth grade teacher and he was picked to be the superintendent to start searching out property to, was suitable for schools. And Mrs. Newsom was a was a principal of that school at that time. But she retired and the board hired me to be the principal of of number two school. So when school was out in 1955, I think there were, in between the two schools, there was about uh, 700 students total. And when, by the summertime, it was over, there were probably 1,500 students. So we had to have double session in number two school. We had a double session at Stanton Lions Club where we had 210 children and Savannah School District where we had 140 students on on double session. And then about, at this time they decided that they needed to get some new schools and the closest school to number two school was a site at the corner of Gilbert and Cerritos. So the board decided to buy 10 acres. And by the time they, they counted the houses that were being built around there and the number of children that would come out of each house, we needed two schools. So there was 10 acres adjoining the 10 acres the board was looking at. It was available from the same farmers. So the board decided that they would try to petition the state and see if we could have a double school. And the state okayed the, the request. So a tidbit that goes along with this, you, the prices of land at that time, the 20 acres was purchased for $35,000 for the, the total 20 acres. Today, one of those acres would be worth several million dollars. So you can see what has happened. So that is the reason that they had the petition to get two schools and that's the reason that Sauk School was a double school. So this is when we broke ground for the Sauk School when we marched up from number two school with all the students picked oranges, had a groundbreaking ceremony, and then went back to Sauk School, and that was the beginning of Sauk School. Hey, that's the first, last oranges that were picked on the, on the grounds of Sauk School. And here is the groundbreaking ceremony. This, Mrs. Maxwell, there's Mr. Maddox, and Ken Nielsen, the superintendent, Mr. Hoskins, the president of the board, and all the kids from Magnolia Number 2 school went up there. This is an invocation that the Baptist minister across the street came and gave. And there's the Mr. Uh, Nielsen. There's Maddie Lou Maxwell just to the left of the, of the flag. She came down for the groundbreaking ceremony. That's Mr. Miller, the principal, the acting principal, I guess. 
There's Mr. Hoskins and Ken Nielsen. They're digging the first shovel full of dirt at Sauk School. And there's the PTA president doing it. There's the first tree that was pushed over by a bulldozer. We had the bulldozer there for the ceremony, and so he pushed over the first tree. Most of the kids, there's Mr. Hoskins in the, in the driver's seat, and Ken Nielsen, the superintendent, on the tractor. There's after the ceremony was over, the children were all walking back to Salk School, to number two school. There's Mrs. Garum. There's Herman the, Herman the custodian. There comes Esther Lochner, uh, who was later with Esther Walter. Then the school, Walter School was named after her, Mr. Rome. There's Mr. Nielsen, the architect, uh, Mr. Frick, Mr. Hoskins, and Ms. Maddox, and uh, the principal, Mel Miller. They're all got our picture in the... There we are, we're all agreeing, I guess, that it was a good day. Okay, here we're coming back to the school. This is the old number two school down in, in Independencia. The one uh, classroom that you saw there. There's Miss Haslam with her uh, second grade students. The building you're seeing there is the only building from uh, old number two school that's still standing. It's, it was moved up. It was a one classroom kindergarten that was moved up to Maxwell School is still standing there and there today. There's Miss Loshner again. How the cars parked out in front of on Garza Street. There they pushed off after they pushed all the trees over, getting ready to clear the site for the Cerritos and, and Gilbert. This is a orange grove. The one uh, Gilbert Street was just a little two-lane street. The pump house, the well for irrigating the grove, was right. That's a just a glimpse of it there. There's Mr. Rohrbacher. He was the the contractor, and uh, he signed a contract for that school for 900 and I think it's 980,000, less than a million dollars for the whole school. This is the first trenches that were being built. That fellow, he must have been getting paying a time and a half. He was running doing his work. There, they got the forms all set out. They were built beforehand. This is the first concrete that was brought in by Ready Mix. First truckload. It's going along Gilbert Street. There are the, the orange groves that were across the street from Salk School. This was the, the south wings of the Salk School. There's the uh, old pump house. That's still sitting in underground. They built a room underground out in Gilbert Street. And they've never used it before, but they got two vent pipes that come up in the sidewalk there that they could actually have a working well at the present time. There the foundations are built ready to be taken off. There's the underground sewer system. Hundreds of yards, pipes going all direction. There's the concrete with the leveling it off. Put on the top plate onto the foundation and they able to build from there. So that shows the whole section of the, the upper grades. 
the orange trees are across the street. Gilbert was just a little two, uh, two lane uh, street at that time. I don't know what the photography was there, and there wasn't much to be seen there. I don't know what I was trying to do at that time. Anyway, that showed that they left some of the orange trees. They only took the orange trees down where the site was being built because the oranges hadn't been picked, and they waited to, to of interest, the, the school site at that time I went with uh, Mr. Nielsen, picked me up, and we went over to this farmer who owned the property before, and we uh, gave him a check for $35,000 for 20 acres of oranges. There's uh, the sewer system under the, the restrooms with the vent pipes ready to go up through the roof. There we have rock being uh, put inside the building for, to keep that, the moisture from coming up from the ground. After they put the the piles of of gravel in there, then they had to put it inside the the foundation. And so they use a clamshell to put it over the edges and spread it out in there. That's the first fly uh, first uh, floor of the concrete being poured there. This is the first upright for the school. And that boy, he could really handle that. He must have been getting triple overtime pay. And there's the, the superstructure being assembled on the ground and then tilted up into place. The construction of that building is so secure for children because there's no way an earthquake could knock that down. The steel that went overhead uh, both ways, it was impossible, I think, for an earthquake to even do any damage at all to the school. There's the carpenter with his skill saw and the many plans that they had. There's the uh, the, uh, the clamshell that put the uh, gravel inside the where it could be leveled out. I had a hard time ke keeping the camera on there. It was like I'm a, a moving target. But the clamshell man, he knew exactly where he was going to put each one of those clamfuls of, of gravel. Here's, they're going to put up now the first concrete or the first steel beams that go the full length of the each one of the classroom uh, sections and a cross beam of concrete across ways. It's kind of interesting uh, like a, a wild horse that had a rope tied to one end of it so they could guide it into place. But they had that building exactly, oh, it almost got away from them. But they, everything just fit perfect. And they guided in there and then they'd untie it, go get another beam, put it up. But that's what, above the heads of all the children that have gone to school here, tremendous architectural feat that uh, Mr. and Mr. the Frick brothers performed. There's the old, the outside building uh, by the incinerator. I counseled a few kids out there in that, uh, in that, con in that brick building. There's the, uh, it's more of the construction of the uprights and the, all the, the studs, the windows, the I tried to get every phase of the construction of a, a building in this film. 
there they have the you can see the steel pipes that are the supporting the overhang for the for the walkways in in front of each set of classrooms the roof is on they're all ready to put the the sheeting is on and now they're getting ready to put the the tar paper on uh, of interest this was the first time that the union permitted a roller to be used in painting in a, on a government project. There's a bricklayer and he he, he, he he was good. He could just take the excess mortar off, put it at the end of the next brick. Hod carrier kept him in it. This is the heating system in the kindergarten wing that was hot air, those pipes. It was pumped in there in the, for the children when they were sitting on the floor. Here's putting on the, the, the hot mix, mopping it on. And then they put the rock on top of the, of the, the hot mix. I think, it, I don't, I'm not sure, I'm sure the building has been re-roofed sometime since then because that's been 50 some years now since that building was built. That was 1948 Plymouth. Or the chopping the the tar, it would split. And then they throw it in the tank and heat it, push it up for the person to carry up there, and then they mop it on the on the roof. Here's the guy. Well, he's going to have a hard time keeping that. He should have another man helping him there. Well, he finally got it on there now. He's putting on the tar paper over the the uh, siding on the on the side of the building and then they come along and they put the chicken wire on top of the of the tar paper and this is the first plaster that was you uh, put on the on the building then they had days and days and months of where they were plastering it seemed like they're never going to get through plastering everything was done by hand today they can blow it on but everything there was had to be put down on by hand with a with a hod carrier carrying it to the to the plaster. There's the backyard. I think we should clean it up a little bit because it's not looking too clean out there. But sooner or later they got it cleaned up. That's the old playground out there. The old playground, the new playground that's going to be. That was a new building with the sticks up. They were building the multi-purpose room at that time. That was the last building to be built. Now they had it all plastered and then they painted on the outside. They painted the plaster. There's the black brick building and there's the, the, um, the auditorium. I think that somebody uh, got some kids riding their bicycle from the tail from the far end of the building all the way over the overpad the uh, covered cap passageways all the way from the south end of the school to the north end of the school without stopping. They're still plastering. That was, that's down in the kindergarten rooms now.
now they're pouring concrete in the in the walkways in front of the the buildings they're screeding it off and then they have a then they come along and have to get down and now this guy gives me the tip of the hat yes sir thank you <laughs> everything was done with with hand tools with the with your knee boards and now the spray that they put on there kind of sealed the the concrete so it wouldn't dry out too fast there's by the the motor purpose room that was a little bit be, behind the construction of the rest of the school there's where there are big tree stands now in the in the uh, in the patio there still lie laying brick Those guys are real mechanics as far as they could, they could almost do that blindfolded. Now watch him put that, picks up the, the loose, the, where he scrapes off, puts it on the end, he doesn't miss a lick. There's where the, the building that is under the street at the present time. Here's the, the painter where they're using the roller. Now they, the union did not permit that until 1956. This was one of the first federal buildings that, or government buildings that was, the union allowed a, a roller to be used. That's the end of the end of the down room classroom number forty. There, there are the pipes that you saw there. The the pump house. There are the two pipes right there. That's vents that go out into the under the street. And there's a to this day there's a a concrete room under under Gilbert Avenue and with the vent pipes where they could put use the and pump water there again this is now the the grading in front of the of the school with the dirt mover and with a caterpillar pushing the tractor Didn't take them long to level it out and, and get the black top there, and it started to look like a finished product. The tool that the tractor is pulling there they, is called a sheep foot roller. All those little things like a bunch of sheep walking over to pack the dirt. All right, this is the first blacktop that was poured for the for the playground in the back of the school. The truck is dumping that his load of, of blacktop into what is called a barber green and that machine levels out and the one man on each side there with a crank gauges the thickness of the blacktop. It's amazing how accurate they can be with that with that blacktop. There's a roller that rolls it, compacts the the blacktop. Here's the first day of Salk School when we're leaving number two school Everybody brought a paper sack, got their books in it. It was raining that day, but we took this flag down at number two school, Magnolia number two.
the Girl Scouts. There they're carrying the, the there comes uh, Mrs. Ralston on the left there, she, uh, PTA president, with, and all the kids. It was raining that day. So now we're at Sauk School. We're putting the flag up at Sauk School for the first time. That was an exciting day. There's Mr. Rome. There's the multipurpose room, teacher's dining room. We look out over the back backyard. There's the office, Jonas Sock School. Looks like we have grass finally. No trees, you can see. There's the playground in the back. No trees. All that was dirt out behind. And no trees at all on the site. Well, oh, four square. I don't know if they still play four square. The kids love to play four square. I love to play with them. And I don't think I have a picture of the of the merry-go-round. I spent many a time pushing <laughs> hundreds of kids on that merry-go-round. When I'd start to t turn it, they'd all come running and get on. I think it would have a, sometimes there's a hundred kids on it, it seemed like it. Here's the first day with it. The whole school, when it came, some of the children came from uh, from uh, Maxwell School, and this is the first day that all the children were at, at, at Salk School. We had a flag raising ceremony out there for the first day. There's Mrs. Romaine, kindergarten teacher with the, with the, the V on the back of her coat. There goes the flag up for the first time. And then all the boys and girls going back to their classrooms. Here goes Agnes Kiefer. There's Mr. Garum. There was Esther Lashner with her her class in front of the of the, the, of the uh, Jonas Salk School name. There's Esther Lawson right in the left hand, who is Esther Walder. The, the Walder's, <coughs> Walder's school was named after her.